requires a lot of inspiration and courage to get out of bed every morning, as Musi does, to fight the good fight and to meet your detractors and naysayers uh, from other parties. And, you know, because liberals are liberals everywhere, uh, sometimes from within your own party. Because Musi is a dangerous liberal. He is dangerous because the party, the liberal party that he sees, is not one of exclusivity. It's not a small party of purism. He wants to enlarge the circle of people who share our values, and then he wants to govern in order to put those values into practice. He said to me, there's something in the air. Don't you think that something, this is a moment of change? He said, I remember and I lived through, and my family lived through apartheid and the change, and now I feel that there's something changing in the air, in the international sphere. And I thought, what does he, does he mean? What? And then I said, yes, he's absolutely right. It is a moment in which things are uncertain. That certainty that liberal democracy we could take for granted, we can be very optimistic, but it's still not there. There's a lot of pushback from authoritarians, fundamentalists, populists. There is a lot of pushback. The world of today shows us that it is not the time to slow down. Our role is now more important than ever. In Musi Mamane, we see one of the most prominent and effective advocates for a society of opportunity. We are proud of having partnered with his party, the Liberal Democratic Alliance and its predecessors for decades. Musi Mamane is the voice of change that South Africa desperately needs, but it echoes throughout Africa and well beyond. Fellow liberals, I think we find ourselves in a unique time. It is my absolute great privilege to be able to stand here and at this particular Congress to accept and present this year's African Freedom Prize on really on behalf of the Democratic Alliance, but on behalf of the liberal tradition in South Africa. The DA and its predecessor parties have been parties that have continued to fight for values that we stand for. For a society that in the past 60 years have continued to fight and we always hold the view that one day South Africa will be governed in a liberal democratic way. I hold the view that the recognition of the Freedom Award is only possible because of the leaders and the giants upon which who have gone before me. I want to recognize especially someone like Helen Suzman. Here was a Jewish woman who decided that whilst she herself was free, it wasn't good enough that she could enjoy the freedoms that others couldn't enjoy. And for years she stood alone as a member of parliament fighting against apartheid, a system that divided people on the basis of race. It's people like Tony Leon when the great Nelson Mandela invited Tony Leon to take up a seat in government. Tony Leon said, no, it was better to set up an opposition movement to the ANC at the time, knowing very well that opposition would serve democracy better in South Africa. It's leaders like Helen Ziller who realize that the continuation of the struggle is to govern as best as you can for the people who elect you to serve in a way that brings clean, accountable governments unmatched by anyone. And therefore, it's to those leaders and on their behalf, I extend my heartfelt appreciation for this prestigious recognition. But I think there's a profound symbolism in being able to receive this award right here in Senegal. As you would have seen, I went yesterday to the island of Gore. It really struck a chord with me. It spoke something to me that reminded me of the pain that so many Africans had felt. This is where Africans in fact lost their freedom. 
It was that place where they were no longer human beings, but they were simply commodities. They were stripped of their freedom so that they can build an economy that gives others their freedom. They were in many ways prisoners in a land of liberty and they lost their dignity about what it means to be a human being, to be a father, to be a husband, to be a wife, to be a daughter, to be a sister, to be a human being. The sad bit about the story of Africa is a story of recycling of repressive regimes, always in search of resources that can be exported to enhance the freedom of others. Back then it was human capital, and I think today we're seeing an expatriation of mineral resources and others. These are still difficult times in our continents. We may very well be a continent rich in resources, but still remain a continent hungry for food and development. We still find ourselves as a continent attractive to aid instead of a continent that is vibrant in trade. We have leaders who have become rulers of the law instead of leaders that have become ruled by the law. And so, when others speak of a dark continent, it is up to you and I, the liberals that are sitting in this room, to disprove that, and we must rewrite the African story if liberalism is to thrive in the world. <laughs> Fellow liberals, I, I make no apology. I think the restoration of freedom is the restoration of the dignity of what it means to be an African, to be a human being. Almost a year ago in Joburg, I attended a similar function to this, where we gave uh, the same Freedom Award to my brother Hakiende Hachilema from Zambia's United Party for National Development. Freedom is actually the power of self-determination, the quality of being independent of fate or necessity. So I guess in many ways, and simply put, Freedom is an ability to live on your own, from your own choosing. A life not, de not determined by the circumstances of your birth, your gender, your sexual orientation, or your religion. There can be many others, but I want to focus on this one today. Because our country, South Africa, can teach a thing or two about the advancement of freedom or the pursuit of freedom. Ours is a story of one of the most told journeys to freedom in recent history. The culmination of our struggle was brought to an, when we brought to an end the apartheid era of three and three centuries of colonial rule. This was meant to have delivered our freedom. Until then, our people lived as slaves in the country of their own birth. They were confined to homelands. They were told what they could earn, where they could live, where they could walk, and ultimately, who they could love and marry. These are liberties that you and I take for granted today. But it's because of that struggle that the language of freedom still permeates every bit of our language in South Africa. And it still holds the symbolism of freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot do it alone. We have to work together. And I'm sure our success in South Africa and your success in your countries will require many allies. Together, I believe we can rewrite the African story. If our continent is to become centuries of exploitation, misrule, and claim its rightful place in the global economy, it will be because of our liberal ideals and liberal values have prevailed. We can't wait. We have to invite people to come over to our way of thinking. We must go out and make sure Africa is prosperous. And we must ensure that we paint a more compelling picture of this continent that is rising, not a dark continent. We must be the ones that are facing the right direction. Africa does not, lead, does not need backward-looking leaders. 
It needs leaders that are focused on tomorrow. I guess the safest way to say it is to say we must stop answering questions that our parents are asking, rather to begin to answer questions our children are asking. But equally so, to be proudly African is not to exclude yourself from the world. We need markets in the EU zone, in China, in the US, to be much more open to African products. I guess in some ways, and I say this with great caution, part of our restitution in what took place in our past is about ensuring that we have better open markets for African goods to end up on the global space so that we build a prosperous Africa. We have to hold human rights as things that are sacrosanct. As Africans, we must be the first ones to stand up without looking to the Hague to hold dictators and evil people like Ova al-Bashir and the work that they're doing here in Africa. We must be the first to stand up. We must be a new generation of leaders that are focused on tomorrow. And I see most of them in this room. And I guess my job today is not to say we take this award for any other reason except to express gratitude to Liberal International for this award, but ultimately to say we must take it on as a new generation. We must take a new fight, a struggle for independence, a fight that says this is our struggle, and that ultimately our struggle is simply this. As many others have said, that at first you must be liberated and then we must liberate ourselves from the liberators. That is the job of Africans. And in the 20th century of African independence, the 21st century must be a century upon which we can chart our way forward for a free and a more prosperous Africa. I really believe, like sitting in this room, our leaders who will take that journey forward. May God bless Africa. Let us indeed live and strive for freedom in this beautiful continent. Thank you very much. And God bless.